In the last couple of lectures, we talked about adders uh, as the basic um, building block of arithmetic circuits, which form a major unit of computers. Um, the other, there are other arithmetic operations. Adder is only one of the elementary operations, but there are other arithmetic operations like subtractors, subtraction, multiplication. So, you can have arithmetic circuits designed for each of these operations. Also, the concept is almost the same. What did you do in the case of adders? We had to write the truth table and we had to get the corner map and get the simplified version and then implement it and if possible try to manipulate the simplified version to uh, a form which is more amenable for practical implementation like exclusive R gates. We also saw methods of speeding up because speeding up is important. In the case of our adders, we saw there is a technique called carry look ahead. We also mentioned there are other techniques which we are not going to get into. So, likewise you can always do for subtraction and multiplication. So, if you want to build a subtractor for example, you have the, the half subtractor and full subtractor. So, you are only going to subtract two bits without considering the previous bit, you have a half subtractor. And if you want to do a subtraction the of a bit series of bits, then when you are considering the subtraction of the previous bit, we will have to see whether uh, one has already been borrowed from that location to the previous location. So, just as a carry in, in the case of adders, we will have a borrow in, in the case of a subtractor. And similarly, we will have a borrow out. So, we can have like adders, two inputs and a carry in and a sum and carry out as outputs. We can also have for subtractors, two inputs and a borrow in and the difference between the two bits and borrow out. So, we can draw similar two tables and a similar um, circuit implementation using corner maps. We will not get into that because we have already uh, seen enough of this uh, 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 large number of these uh, corner map techniques or truth table techniques. Does not matter what the function is, once you define a truth table, once you define the corner map, implementation is straightforward. So, there is no point in going on talking about different types of circuits. Of course, more number of circuits you design you get more practice. But there is another scheme of subtraction called complement subtraction. That is because the hardware in your computer you want to have a hardware arithmetic logic unit which is just the arithmetics and logic functions. We like to have that as compact as possible. You do not want to have a adder unit and subtractor unit 
like that. So, if it is possible to combine more than one operation using a hardware unit that is a sort of a, a desirable feature in hardware design. So, for this purpose we will talk of now what is known as subtraction by complement numbers, subtraction using complement numbers. What is a complement of a number? Depends on the number system. In a decimal system, see in any number you have a base. Decimal system the base is 10, in binary system the base is 2, they also call it radix, base or radix. So, depending on the number of digits or the positions or the bits, you define the complement as the highest possible number you can represent. minus the number. So, let us say in the case of any general radix r, radix r, r's complement of a n bit number, n digit number or n digit is for decimal bit for binary. So, since it can be r can be anything, I do not know whether it is called a digit or bit, I can say n positions whatever number is r power n minus the number r is complement by number n n digit number n n is the number I think I have used a wrong uh, variable that is ok one is small variable small n the other is a capital n is the number n is the number of digit if you what I mean by this is if, if for example, let us say r is equal to 10 decimal system, and let us say n is equal to 4, there will be 4 digits. So, if I represent a number n with 4 digits, uh, digits the tens complement of n which is a 4 bit 4 digit decimal number 4 digit decimal number tens complement of n is 10 power 4 minus number n. If the number n is 1, 2, 3, 4, because there are 4 digits, it is a decimal system. In the tens complement of this is Ten power four is ten thousand, right? Ten power four is ten thousand, is it right? Subtract one, two, three, four from this. How much is this? Six. Six, is it six again? Is it seven? Eight. Is that right? Eight seven six six. So, you just subtract the number from the number which is represented by the base to the power of the number of digits. Base of the radix to the power of the number of digits is the number from which you should subtract the given number then you get the complement of that number in that system. There is also a you define r minus 1's complement, same r radix, r minus 1's complement is defined as r's complement minus 1.
or if you want to put it the other way it is of n for n r minus 1's complement is with n bits for the number n with n digits again I could have probably used p digits or something but choice is n but does not matter n is the small n is the number of digits capital n is the number I do not think there is any confusion in that r minus 1's complement is here in this case you can write this as r power n since I have to subtract 1 from it r minus n minus 1 from this I subtract n so I will apply the same for the same number n which is 1 2 3 4 r is equal to 10 in this case r is equal to 10 and n is equal to 4 again small four, small n is 4 I will use same n is equal to 4 r is equal to 10 capital N is 1 2 3 4 but instead of r's complement or 10's complement I will now define r minus 1's complement which is 9's complement r minus 1's complement is 9 so 9's complement is this is r, r power n which is 10 power 4 is 10,000 but I have to subtract 1 from it so it is 9999 so it is 9999 minus 1234 which is now 5 6 7 8 you look at this number 868766 8, 6, it is 8765 there is a one difference which is that r minus n minus 1 since I subtracted from r power n minus 1 for r minus 1's complement I subtracted the given number n from r power n minus 1 for r's complement I subtracted the given number from r power n so that extra 1 from a, I, in my the total from which I subtracted this number that 1 is showing up here showing up here as 1 less than the r's complement so for 9's complement of a given number why is it convenient because 9's complement is nothing but the complement of each digit here I had to make a subtraction of 10 minus 4 so it is borrow borrow is involved 10 minus 4 is 6 so since it is 10 I had to borrow 1 from here so when I borrowed 1 from here this became 9 9 minus 3 is 6 and since this had to be borrowed so this borrow traveled through here there is no such borrow condition here each digit because maximum digit I can have here is a 9 the maximum value of this any of these digits is 9 and this, this is 9999 nine, nine, nine. I am going to subtract any number each of the digits cannot be more than 9 so I all I have to do is a simple subtraction digit by digit so 9 or minus 1's complement or 9's complement in this case is easier to perform than 10's complement which is some subtraction involves in borrow so if you want to ca calculate tons complement I can always find nines complement and add one to it so tons complement is of any number is nines complement of that number plus one what do we say all this we will see in a minute before we go to the reason for doing this some size subtraction can be done using complement system there must be some obvious advantage we talked about hardware we talked about arithmetic units which need to do add subtract 
multiply divide and everything and I want to reduce the hardware or use a common hardware for doing more than one function. In that context I have talked about complement numbers which means subtraction using complement numbers can be done using the same hardware that we use for addition that is why I am bringing this concept I will tell you how. Before that we have to switch to binary because we will be doing binary arithmetic in our digital course logic design or computer design course. So, this was to explain to you because since we are familiar with decimal numbers I introduced this concept of complementing of numbers using decimal concept, but in reality we are interested in binary numbers. So, binary numbers you have only r is equal to 2. That means I have 2's complement and 1's complement. So, R's complement, R minus 1's complement corresponds to 2's complement, 2, pi, 2 minus 1, which is 1's complement. So, again, R power n number of bits minus the given number n in the case of 2's complement, R power n minus 1 minus the given number n is 1's complement. So, let us take a simple example I without going through all this detailed definitions which are already done in this case of in the case of decimal numbers we will take an example of n is equal to 8 or even 4 make it simple 4 that means a 4 bit number in decimal you call it digits in binary you call it bits I mean number n can be anything Uh, it has a binary number, so I have to give it in binary. In decimal, I took it as 1, 2, 3, 4. In binary, I need to write it as a binary number. Let us say it is 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 5 really, decimal. 0, 1, 0, 1 is decimal 5, correct? So, let me find 2's complement and 1's complement for this number. So, n is equal to 4, capital N is 0, 1, 0, 1. So, 2's complement is or I will do it the other way now to make it easy for you. Let me first find 1's complement. What did I say for r minus 1's complement? I write the largest number possible with the given number of digits. In the case of r, r's complement of course, I need to write plus 1. So, that the base all, all this can all this can, I won't call it confusion this difference between r and r minus 1 comes because we talk with 0 0 has to be counted if you don't have 0 then there is not, nothing like r's complement r minus 1's complement but 0 is very important we have to represent 0 and you know that is India's contribution to mathematics not 0 I think 0 was contributed I think it looks like now it is 0 is the contribution anyway. 0 is important. So, nowadays once complement what is the maximum binary number the largest binary number I can represent using 4 bits 1 1 1 1. I subtract capital N which is 0 1 0 1 from this I get 1's complement add 1 to it I get 2's complement is that right. So, 1's complement is 1 1 1 1 minus 0 1 0 1. Now, again my binary arithmetic does not require borrow because either a 1 always 1 on the top either a 1 or a 0 in the bottom. So, either it is 0 or a 1 result. So, I do not have to worry about borrow from the previous from the next location next bit position. Sort of makes sense because maximum with 4 bits 1 1 1 is 15 and this is 5 this is 10 total should make 15 that is all there is no big magic here. We, we had we we are giving we are giving a number we are finding its complement complement you know what a complement is complementary angles and all that you have studied in trigonometry. So, if something is given what is not given is a complement from the total you subtract what is given from the total you get complement right. The total is 1111 given is 5 
So, the complement is tan. When 2's complement is One zero one zero. So, when you add 2's complement and the given number, it should give rise to 1 more than 9, 9, 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 more than 1, 1, 1, 1 is 16, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 15, 1 more than 1, 1, 1 is 16. This is 11, given number is 5, so total is 16, that also tallies. So, this addition of 1 gives me 2's complement. That is because now if you want to do it the rigorous way, it is r power n in this case r is equal to 4, r is equal to 2, 2 power 4, 2 power 4 is 16, 16 in binary is not 1, 1, 1, 1, 4 digit, 4 bits all right, but since 0 is counted, 16 becomes the first bit of the, the next position, fifth position. So, I need 5 bits to do that, which is 1 0 0 0 0 subtract 0 1 0 1 I do the same 1. So, now you have to use the borrow arithmetic and then this is 1 same thing here because it has been borrowed here. So, this one is so this is 1 0 1 1 16 minus 5 is 11. So, I can always find out the 2's complement of given, we need 2's complement and 1's complement in our subtraction, we will see that when subtract, we, we want to do subtraction not by designing a subtractor, subtractor can be designed as you design a high adder starting from the requirement, problem statement, truth table, Boolean algebra, corner map, reduce, gate structure, fine, nothing wrong in doing the subtraction like that, do not think that it should not be done that way. Because you want to have a common hardware for adder and subtractor, functionally we want to make it as compact as possible because you are not, it is very, very unlikely that we are going to add and subtract at the same time. Very, very unlikely that in a computer, in an arithmetic unit, in a calculator, you are going to do subtraction and addition simultaneously, you will do one after the other. So, I can use the same hardware piece. So, when you do subtraction by complement method, I can show that and same adder can be used to do subtraction that is the object of the whole exercise now. So, a given number you are asked to find the 2's complement, 1's complement no problem, you complement the given number bit by bit, <coughs> complement the number given number by bit by bit you get 1's complement, add 1 to it you get 2's complement. Okay? Now, where does it fit in case of subtraction? Now, subtraction is same as adding the complement of the number. Okay, two's complement number. If you add to a given number, suppose I want to subtract a b from a, a minus b. I want to find out instead of designing a logic for a subtraction, I can use an adder logic and add instead of b the complement of b. A plus complement of b is same as a minus b. That is all that is to it. That is why we need to know complement so that we can use the same adder which you have designed, whether it is a straight adder or a carry look at adder, whatever adder. The same hardware or the functional unit called adder can be used for subtraction. So, let us do this example subtraction using 2's complement. So, let us again take a simple 4 bit example. Now, I want to subtract a minus b, let us say a is 1100, b is a is 12, 12 and b is 5, is it not? 12 minus 5 is? 7 I should get answer which is 0 1 1 1. So, what you do is I write A as it is, 
I find 2's complement of B. So, 1's complement of B first write, 1's complement of B is 1 0 1 0. That means, complement bit by bit, each bit you complement, that is 1's complement, add 1 to it, you get 2's complement. So, I am now going to add 2's complement of Add, add, add. What is this? One plus one, zero with a one carry one. This extra carry, which is not required in this case, because this is not a. We are talking a four-bit number here. You have to be careful. There is a little um, sort of a caution here. I am dealing with 4 bit numbers A and B, A is 4 bits, B is 4 bits, so I am expecting a 4 bit result. It is not A plus B, the result can be 5 bits. A is 4 bits, B is 4 bits, I am subtracting A minus B, the result has to be 4 bits. So, all I have to do is to discard this, discard that carry, ignore it. So, because I am going, to, I know that the result is going to be 4 bits or less, I discard the the last bit. Now, this number is how much is this? So, this is discard carry. What is this number? 0 1 1 1 is 7. So, 12 minus 5 is 7. I can also do it once complement way, but then I will get one less number and I add 1 to it finally. Suppose I do once complement addition, A is once complement of A, B is what? B is 0 1 0 1, once complement is 1 0 1 0. Is that right? B is 0 1 0 1, once complement of B is 1 0 1 0, add Now, I cannot discard this carry because I know that one carry has to be, because this carry can be discarded, I have to add 1 to it. I can discard this carry and add 1 to it, add 1. Or you can say sort of, it is not logical. This one is brought here and added, they say. It is called end around carry. You will see in the book, it is called EAC. You bring the carry around and add it here. It does not make sense. You have to add 1 to 2's complement number. It is not a magic or something we are showing. So, it is a logic. So, you have to add 1 to this because it is 1's complement and 2's complement. 2's complement gives the subtraction number. The subtraction of two numbers, subtraction of B from A, the result is the 2's complement addition of A and B. In other words, A minus B is same as A plus 2's complement of B, not 1's complement. Since we need to have 2's complement and if we have done only 1's complement, I have to add anyway 1. One somewhere 1 has to be inserted, that 1 is inserted here. But it is okay, it happens that we are going to discard one. You discard one and then add one. So, as if you are bringing it back and adding it. I think it is for more for people to remember it. This is some sort of a, a tip for remembering that one has to be brought. So, they say bring this and add. That is not. But then you will find it is a very serious thing. In the book, you will say end around to carry. You bring it back, they will put an arrow like this and show it like this. If you want to do it, fine, and no problem, as long as you understand what is happening. Now, we are talking of a positive number subtracted from positive number, the result is a positive number. 
suppose I have a number from which I am subtracting is larger than the given number the result will be negative. We will also look at that possibility. What will happen if the subtracted number is negative I mean subtracted number I mean the difference is negative which happens when n is we will put the other way 5 minus 12 can I now say a is equal to 5 b is 12 the result has to be minus 7 is that right So, I will do this a is equal to 0 1 0 1 2's complement of b by now you know how to do that this is 0 0 1 1 add 0 0 1 1 to that you have to add 1. So, what will be 2's complement of b 1 0 1 0 0 right. That is because 1's complement is 0 0 1 1 2's complement is uh, add 1 this becomes 0 0 1 add so a minus b is same as adding a and 2's complement of b which is 1 0 0 1 is that right right you mean the answer is right my addition is right the answer is not right. Now and there is no carry here you see significantly there is a carry here is a 0 in the last digit. So, when there is a 0 in the last digit and a carry it represents the positive result difference is positive. Whenever the difference is positive you will have a 0 in the last bit position which is required bit position and this 1 which is going to be discarded there is a 1 in the discarded to be position to be discarded 0 in the last position of interest. Here it is exactly the opposite I have a 1 here in the last position of interest and a 0 in the discarded position to be discarded. So, this gives a signal this is a negative number. If the last position of interest is 0 and 1 we have a carry which has to be discarded then it is a positive result answer is right. If on the other hand you get a 0 here or a 1 here you know it is a negative number. So, that means I have to get a choose complement of that before I can the correct answer is not this the number is the 2's complement of the difference. So, if I take the 2's complement of a this number, so I will call this 2's uh, complement this is not a minus b really this is a minus b let us say star and if I take the 2's complement of this this is going to be 1's complement plus 1 right 1's complement is 0 1 1 0 add 1 to it I get 2's complement which is what is this number 0 1 1 1 7 but you should not take it as 7 because of this this is minus 7. So, when the number is negative you take the 2's complement and give the negative sign to it the number is positive you take the number as it is. How do you know it is a positive number negative number? The discarded bit is 1 in the case of positive numbers and then and the last bit of interest is a 0 the last bit of interest is 0 is a positive number this is called MSB most significant bit as far as we are concerned this is the most significant bit this is the least significant bit I think we already mentioned this once when you have several bits the lowest significant if lowest significant bit next higher next higher next higher the, the maximum significance is this bit. So, this is the MSB 
and this is LSB. So, if MSB is 0, this is a positive number, forget about discarding because anyway we are going to discard that 1 and 0. Here this 0 is discarded, there 1 is discarded. So, let us not worry about that is an extra signal for you, but do not worry about that. I have this most significant because 0 is a positive number, here I have the most significant bit as 1 which is a negative number. Once the result is negative, the 2's complement addition of b to a does not give you a minus b if the difference happens to be a negative number indicated by the fact that msb is 1. If the msb is 1, the difference a minus b which is computed by adding b's 2's complement of b to a is not the correct number, it is the 2's complement of that difference which is the correct number, which is the 2's complement. But you do not have to worry about it because this will be again this is a negative number since of saying minus how do you say minus 7 in a computer you add 7 you can put 7 binary 7 you can put binary any number how do you put minus sign I said all symbols have to be represented by binary codes whether it is an alphabet special symbols comma punctuation email letters database marks it's all binary numbers, binary digits, bits. So negative has to be somewhere. So that is our way of telling the computer is a negative number. It's also the same way. The computer's way of telling us it's a negative number is also the same way. So in a any number of bits, you define the number of bits in a number. The most significant bit, if it is one, it is a negative number. The most significant bit is a zero, it's a positive number. So even though it's for our consumption, for our understanding, to make sure that I have done this arithmetic right to make sure that my arithmetic is right, I want to do this 2's complement and check whether it is really 7. I knew it is 7, uh, I knew it is negative, but I am not sure it is 7. How do I check it is 7? By taking 2's complement and finding out it is indeed 7. But this is 0, but I know the number is negative, so I cannot have a 0 here when the number is negative. The answer is minus 7, when the answer is minus 7, I cannot have a 0 here, I have 1 here. So, Negative numbers are represented in computers by 2's complement whose MSB is 1. So, if you want to give a negative number input to the computer, you do not give a number and punch in this negative sign in the calculator. Of course, you type that, but minus does not that minus or sign of the number you have this in the calculator plus minus sign, you know. If you punch that key, a minus does not go and get stored. Then minus translated immediately, you have to convert whatever number you had written earlier, had to be converted to 2's complement and stored with a negative 1, with a, with a 1 MSB. So, MSB 1 is the significant, MSB 1 is indicative of the fact that the number is represented as a negative number, negative number is represented. Similarly, the computer when it find out, finds out the result gives you a negative number in the case of negative numbers it gives a 1 as MSB, you know it is a negative number, you deal with it the way you want, it is a final step and you want to give the answer to the examination, then you will not write it like this, you will say it is a minus 7 in your answer paper. But if this is going to be fed into the next stage of computation, because after all you do computation, it is a long equation or whatever arithmetic problem solving. This is an intermediate result which will feed into the next stage. At that time, again, you have to feed minus 7 to the computer. The computer, we do not have to worry about translating into minus 7 and making it plus 7 again and then minus 7, all that step. So, this is minus 7. This extra step was to just to tell you it is not wrong arithmetic we did. I showed you that right arithmetic is all in right arithmetic only. So, the answer is this. In the case of 5 minus 12 and this in the case of 12 minus 5. In the case of 12 minus 5, the answer is plus 7, so it is 0, 1, 1, 1. So, 0, 1, 1, 1 is plus 5, or 0, 1, 1 is plus 7. So, now the, the sum up it is 12 minus 5 is plus 7, 0, 1, 1, 1. 5 minus 12 is minus 7. And if you do not believe me, 
all I am asking you to do is to take this two's complement and see for yourself it is 7. So, all I am saying. Any questions here? The complementing of numbers makes subtraction and adding operation that is where the crux of the whole matter is today. I introduce number systems in complement number system to tell you of course, I could always told you this is the way to do arithmetic, but I thought I wanted to tell you how do, why they do it. Why they do it is two complement numbers. If you have you can add and then get a subtraction performed. Subtraction is reduced in addition operation not reduce if you do not want to call it reduce converted. Why do you have to do that? I can have a single hardware called adder one hardware unit and since I am not going to use the same hardware both for adding and subtracting at the same time when I want add I add when I want to subtract I subtract all I have to feed is the numbers in two complement form. If I feed the numbers in the regular form it gets added in two complement form if I put it it gets subtracted. So, the question now is how do you convert a given number to two complement number that is extra logic is it not? As I said nothing is free there is no such thing as free lunch as they say you know somebody invites you for lunch you know that there is something else coming for a favor. So, that means you need to do something to get these two complement numbers and but it is easy because all it is you do is inversion and add 1. How do you get an inverter of a number just put it pass it through an inverter. So, quickest way to invert is put an inverter which all of us know. So, first I will tell you how to get 1's complement then we will see how to do 2's complement of a given number. So, now I have now reduced the subtraction to if you all agree on this is there anyone who does not agree on this you better ok. Other now next step is how am I going to convert a given number to 2's complement before I can add it. So, first let us do 1's complement that is why I told you the hardware wise it is easier to do that 1's complement and plus 1. Even though in principle you want to do this this borrowing from the previous all those things I want to avoid a simple complementing will give you 1's complement all I have to do is add an extra 1 somewhere. I can do it at the beginning or I can do it at the end is it not. So, 1's complement is an inverter. So, if it is A C bar no problem any bit, but the problem is a given bit A can be in converted into its one's complement with inverter, but I do not know when to convert when not to convert. When it is adding operation I have the same hardware unit called adder in which I give A and B without converting it adds up. When I give A and convert B as two's complement and feed it it subtracts. So, I need to know when to give the number directly as a correct number when to give this number as a two's complement number. Whenever I need subtraction I need to give it as a two's complement number whenever I need addition I need to give it directly. So, I need to have a control of this addition the convert I need to have a control of this inversion operation whenever I need. So, very simple technique for that let us do an exclusive R gate suppose I have an exclusive R gate. this is the number I want to invert A i not always, but whenever I want when do I want when s is equal to 1 yes is a subtraction. Suppose I give my s here the second input is A if this is 1 and this is 1 what is the output exclusive R gate 1 1 is the exclusive R input output 0. When this is 0 and this is A i this also becomes A i. So, when S is 0 that is for add When I give S is equal to 0, it is addition operation. 
this is a i bar and this is a i bar if s is equal to 1 a i do you agree with me if s is 0 this is 0 this is 0 this is 1 this is 1 s is 1 if this is 0 this is 1 this is 1 this is 0 so whenever I want to invert I give s is equal to 1 whenever I do not want to invert I put s is equal to 0 now not only I can invert and get one's complement I can do it at will do it when I need it so by simple two's complement circuitry or one's complement circuitry is a bank of exclusive or gates to which I feed the inputs so this is my two's complement one's complement circuit I will call it one's complementer because we want to give big names to small things right my one's complementer hardware I give a series of exclusive R gates let us say 4 bits let us be happy with 4 bits today a0 a1 a2 a3 or b because we said b a is b just it can be anything I just for sake of continuity of the lecture I am giving b's because a minus b or a plus b you know so b I am converting it can be a it can be p it can be q does not matter now I am going to connect all the other inputs together and give this as s whenever I want subtraction I make this s is equal to 1 I get b bar b0 bar b1 bar b2 bar b3 bar whenever s is 0 that means when I add s is equal to 0 for add 1 for subtract so if it is adding it is a0 b0 a0 a1 a2 a3 will come out subtraction a0 bar a1 bar a2 bar a3 bar so a3 bar will come out so it is one's complementary circuitry of course I have to add 1 to you will see how to do that so all I have to do it now I have an adder which we did elaborately in the last couple of lectures and I now have a one's complementer which is simple logic I also proved to you that one's complementer or two's complementer can be used in conjunction with an adder to get a subtraction done all I have to do is to glue it together put it together to get a subtractor we will see that in the next lecture how to get the subtraction now there is nothing you can do it yourself I have an adder I have a complementer what else do you need tell me where we will give that extra one carry in is usually 0 carry in is usually 0 in adder right first first stage carry in is always 0 you may get 1 not always 1 whenever you want subtraction so you make that same as yes so I have a full adder A directly feed B feed it through this complementary circuitry and connect C to the same yes which is going to control the complementary circuitry and then output I get fair enough very simple all I have to do is to do the drawing part of it you can do it yourself it is in the book just have to draw this complementer direct input complemented input yes being controlling the complementing as well as the carry input you get the output result as negative a minus are there any questions okay